room has just been jammed up in number four. Get me Dr. Christian. Serious? Great so. His left arm. Paul Wilson offloading to replace him. Yes, sir. Hello. This is John Hewitt. Have Dr. Christian come right over. But Dr. Christian isn't here, Mr. Hewitt. This is an emergency. Well, I'll tell him just as soon as he comes in. Don't bother to tell him anything. I'll call a doctor from Center City. But Mr. Hewitt. Talking though, I wouldn't know what to say. Just take a hand and look at him. That's enough. I'll drop by as soon as I can. Goodbye, Tom. Now, I want you to break clean. No getting low. Come out fight. And may the best man win. <laughs> Come on, I better take you home. Mm, you're quite a problem, Patsy. Your first day off from the measles. And... I was up yesterday and nothing happened to me. Of course, I didn't go out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Does your brother always drive like that? No. Nah. You ought to see him on an open road. Then he really lets it out. Yeah, I've heard stories. He's going to be a racing driver. There isn't anybody in town that can drive like Don. Do you remember what you said the other day about not having apple pie anymore? Yes, I'm sure I do. I made it myself. I know you don't like Margie's pies. What? Margie? Oh, the cook. Yeah, you're right. She's not so good on pies. I see where there's going to be a new state housing act. Mm-hmm. That's good, isn't it? Yes and no. Hi, Obama. Hi, Hi dear. Tom. Was there another automobile race last night? Uh-huh. An important one? Yes and no. Don, tell Dr. Christian I want to see him for a minute. Mmm. Say, all right, take that all back about Margie's pies. This is all right. Hello, Ann. Oh, hello. hello, John. Again. It seems to me that every boy in town is using her for a punching bag. That's not so. I can let any boy my age when they fight fair. Ask Dr. Christian. He's my second. So that's what you were doing this morning. Well, not exactly. Why? Was there anything wrong? Just that one of my men had an accident and I had to call a doctor from Center City. Oh, that's too bad, John. That's how I felt about it. I pay you a yearly fee to look after these cases. I'm not getting my money's worth unless you're around when I want you. We'd better let Margie give you that piece of steak for your eyes. 
Will we still be able to use it for dinner? Well, John, you're not being very reasonable about it. I I've tried being reasonable with people in Rivers End far too long. This whole town is 20 years behind the time. What you all need is a little applied efficiency. John. It's a matter of business, Doctor. My men must have medical attention when they need it. You're evidently too busy with other things, so I'm making other arrangements. I don't think that he meant it, Paul. He was just upset. But Miss Hastings, I brought these oh, over here. Oh, don't argue, Joe Benson. You take those tomatoes right back to the came from. Well, look at them. They're a nice red spot. The patient. I'm sorry, Miss Judy. I just wanted to pay the doctor something on account. Well, why don't you sell those things and bring in the money? Market's pretty well crowded up with tomatoes now, ma'am. So is my kitchen. Carl Nelson delivered 10 bushel this morning and Eddie Wallace 15 yesterday. I guess you folks think Dr. Christian's in the ketchup business. But the doctor said that I... Never mind what the doctor said. How can you expect any business sense from a man who'd throw away a career and waste his life in a town full of ungrateful... Never mind that, Mrs. Hastings. Hello, Joe. Hello, Doctor. Mr. Hewitt's been looking for you, and he... He found me. You sure have a fine new boy. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> when will you let my wife be up? Oh, in a few days. How many bushels have you? Five, but I can get some more. One would be too many. They're very healthy eating, Doctor. Chock full of vitamins A and B. Mm. I presume the doctor gets this medical advice free. All right, Joe. Take them into the kitchen. I'll credit you for them. Well, Doctor, how would I have them for dinner? Stewed? Roasted? Or squeezed. They're delicious any way you fix them. <laughs> squeezed they'll be. Come on, you. <laughs> Who's first, Judy? Doctor, I didn't arrive first, but I had such a twinge in my back this morning. Well, you simply must see me immediately. Mrs. Minnows, I told you you needn't come back this week. You're perfectly healthy. I resent that, Doctor. Cass was here first. Come into the office, Cass. Well, of all things to think that I... I am sick. I don't care what it is. Yeah, it's time to land. Just take off your shirt and we'll get ready for you. Won't be long. Nothing to it, Doc. I've had every sort of an operation, even without a whiff of gas. What are all those letters, Judy? Oh, those are bad bills. Oh. And it's not going to do you any good to protest. From now on, we're going to send them to your patients every month. Oh, that seems like a pretty good idea. Why, Doctor, you don't mean that you actually are... From now on, we are going to start practicing a little applied efficiency. Applied efficiency? Mm -hmm. John Hewitt says it's the secret of his success. Anything wrong? I am no longer attending physician to the Hewitt Lumber Company. Oh, that's terrible. I'll admit it's bad. But it's not as bad as old dad. Oh, but that was one income that didn't come in tomatoes. <laughs> you just have to work a little harder, that's all. Tell Cass to come in, will you? Ready? I was just looking at the appointment book. Doctor's got a busy day today. Will you come in now? Yeah, sure. But well, seeing he's so busy, saying there's an empty spot on the book for the end of next week, I thought maybe... The doctor uh... has everything ready now, Cass. Uh, did I ever tell you about the time they sewed up my ear over in Center City?
I am in it is high on duty. Did you see Mrs. Johnson's face when... When you told her Billy was going to be all right? Moments like that are worth all the hard work and sleepless nights. <laughs> and tomatoes. <laughs> Doctor, what did Mrs. Hastings mean outside about wasting your life? Well, you see, when I first came to Rivers End, it was just a temporary job. My ambition in those days was to go back to Chicago and be a big success. I made a mistake of telling Mrs. Hastings, and she's been throwing it at me ever since. That doesn't sound like you, not finishing something you'd started. Oh, I had a chance to go back later on. But by that time, Bill Wallace had taken a turn for the worse, and Mrs. Drake was expecting another baby, and, well, I just couldn't leave. It's a funny thing, Judy. A young man starts out to set the world on fire. And he's more interested in where he does it than how he does it. I was pretty much surprised when I suddenly realized that my work in Rivers End was just as important to me as anything I could possibly do in Chicago. But Savy, we haven't got any time for all this reminiscing. Oh, yes, we do. There aren't any more patients. There aren't, eh? I demand an examination. Mrs. Minnows, the doctor said there was no need for you to wait. You're perfectly healthy. That's just one man's opinion. By a friend of mine who lives in Center City, has been going to doctors for years, and it wasn't until last week that they suddenly found out what was wrong. She might have had some complicated symptoms, but you don't have... Nonsense! Well, I can match her symptom for symptom, and then some. What I need is to be put on a diet like she was. A diet? Certainly. Nothing but crushed parsnips. She feels perfectly marvelous now. But, Mrs. Minnow, that couldn't possibly have any... Wait a minute, Judy. There may be something to what Mrs. Minnow says. Mrs. Hastings! I've been thinking, Mrs. Minnow. Perhaps a diet is just what you need. Oh, I'm glad you agree with my diagnosis. I was about to go out and find a doctor who would. Yes, doctor. Oh, Mrs. Hastings, I've decided to put Mrs. Minnow on a strict diet. Well, it might improve her disposition, but not her health. That's perfect. No, I wouldn't be too sure. I think a strict diet of tomatoes is just what she needs. Tomatoes? How interesting! A chock full of vitamins A and B. Why, Doctor, I... I wonder why I didn't notice that myself. Oh, look, it's written all over her poor, sick face. Come with me, Mrs. Minow. Hello, Judy. Oh, hello, Roy. I came to tell the doctor something. You couldn't have phoned. Well, uh, besides that, there was something I wanted to take up with you. If you're going to lecture me just because I broke a date yesterday... Judy, day, I'm not going after to... After all, I did tell you I had to work with the doctor. I can't help it if babies are born. Of course you can't. Then you're not angry? No, not at all. But I stood you up on a date, didn't I? Yes, but business is business. I don't care. You ought to be mad. Well, Judy, I'll get mad if you insist, but... Oh, Roy, you're such a dope when it comes to romance. I got romance. I'm crazy about you. I'm crazy about you, but... Well, business is business. Judy! 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 Oh, 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 hello, doctor. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. Uh, uh, could you drop by the store, say, about uh, 5 o'clock? Anything wrong? No, uh, it's a sort of a meeting. Oh, I'll be there, but I mean, is anything wrong between you and Judy? No, I don't know, Doctor. She's mad because I'm not mad, and... <laughs> oh, Roy, there's one thing about Judy you never seem to remember. What's that? She's a woman. Well, can I do anything about it? Well, some authorities prescribe going around with other women for a while. You know, arouse a little jealousy. But I don't like other women. Just name it, Marilee. Anything in the place is yours for the asking. I thought this store belonged to Roy Davis. Quiet, brat. A lover's delight sounds awfully nice, but... Oh, that's my specialty. Say, Marilee, how'd you like to go to the dance tonight? She's going with my brother, Don. Say, what are you having? 
You know, we don't let kids hang around here without buying anything. I'm here with my brother's girl. I'm not anyone's girl. Well, of course you're not. And Don shouldn't go around talking as though you belong to him. Should he? Hey! You can't do that to my brother! Listen. If I make you an ice cream cone, will you promise not to say a word? Not a word until it's finished? Strawberry? Sure. It's a deal. Hello, Beverly. Sorry I'm late. How much do I owe you? Not a cent, my friend, not a cent. I'm treating merrily. Uh, have a lover's delight, Don. They're swell. I'm not feeling so hot, but okay. One of the same. Have you decided what color dress you're going to wear to the dance, merrily? Why, no. What do you want to know for, Don? Mm, nothing. Never mind. Huh. Maybe you have to be sure a socks will match it. <laughs> suppose it never occurred to you that a man has to know those things in order to select the proper corsage. Don, but just ask Mary to be untrue to you. Why well, I ought to knock your block off. Well, go ahead. Just start something. Go ahead. Our referee. That's he. Really, boys, there's no need for resorting to physical violence. Well, I guess we all see the thing the same way, then. Right? It's an inspiration. Hello, boys. Hello, Doctor. Hi, Doctor. Doctor, we have to work fast. With Mayor Sparling resigning and the council having the power to appoint someone to his unexpired term, we, we want a mayor that'll bring this town to life. Well, you know the condition of the school, Doctor. The plumbing is a disgrace. Well, the whole building looks like it's going to collapse. In other words, we've it? got to have a progressive city government. Yes, I know the need. Probably better than any of you. I've seen people die. Seen routine operations become emergencies. Just this morning, a baby died. All because we need a hospital. We've got to appoint somebody who really cares about this town. Someone whom the people have confidence in. In other words, Dr. Christian. Yeah, that's yeah, it, Doctor. That's it. Our minds are made up. Gentlemen, I agree with your diagnosis, but you're prescribing the wrong cure. Oh, you're too <laughs> modest, Doctor. No. What would you think of a man who could untangle the red tape? Get things done. Well, who? John Hewitt? No, no, no. Oh, no. Of course not. But he has no city pride. Perhaps, but he's honest. And he's the best executive in Rivers Hand. But he's got a big business of his own to run. He wouldn't accept the appointment in a hundred years. No. Well, if you tell him how badly the town needs a man of his ability. Flatter him? You can catch more flies with honey than you can with Winnegal. <laughs> hey, Roy. Oh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. What do you have, Don? I need a little pick-me-up. You'll kind of run down. Oh, well, uh, perhaps some rhubarb and soda. Rhubarb and soda? I don't want any of that kid stuff. How about a bromide? Maybe I'd better have a look at you, Don. No, I'm all right. You know, just been living a little too high lately. Late hours and... Stomach pretty jumpy? Say, what is this? Can a man have a hangover without the Board of Health looking into it? Oh, hold still a moment now. Is he very sick, Dr. Christian? He'll live. It's the measles. That's impossible. Why, well, I thought only children got measles. Ha! Oh, the glamour boy. Oh, gee, Don, and just before the dance, too. Oh, I gotta go to that, Doc. It must be a mistake. Does your eyes feel kind of hot? And are you all woozy inside? Yes. It's measles, all right. Oh, shut up, will you? All right, Don, I better take you home. Yes, come along, Don. Listen, Marilyn. Keep away from me. I don't want any kids' diseases. Now, don't worry, Don, old boy. I'll take care of Marilyn. It's too bad, Don. Take your hands off me, you brat. You got me into this. You gave them to me. Gentlemen, no one is more acutely aware than I am of the sorry state of affairs in our community. You know I am opposed to old-fashioned methods. But I have a full-time job already, running this plant. But, Mr. Hewitt, uh, 
There's no one else in town with half your ability. You're the ideal man for the job. That's right. Yes, John. You see, Roy, it's no use. I told you from the beginning you were wasting your time. But, Doctor, you told me. I told you he wouldn't be capable of running the town in his own business, too. What do you mean, capable? I could run this town during my lunch hours if it weren't for, for... If it weren't for the fact that it would be easier to forget where was and move his business to a more progressive town. I resent that insinuation, Dr. Christian. I'm willing to do as much as the next man for River's End. But, uh... Well... Come on, gentlemen, we're wasting our time. Dr. Christian, I'll thank you to let me do my own talking. I'll decide whether they're wasting their time or not. You mean you might do it? <laughs> Why, George, it's a great temptation, I... Come on, John. We certainly could get things humming in this town. <laughs> don't say anything now you might regret later, John. I never say anything I don't mean. Gentlemen, I accept your offer. Oh, 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 fine. <laughs> what was that advice about flies and honey? Sometimes vinegar works, too. Well, we can't wait any longer for the health department. I'm sorry Dr. Christian didn't get here because, frankly, gentlemen, his department is the most inefficiently run in town. Your Honor, that's not true. Dr. Christian has done a magnificent job. I, I prefer to talk in terms of facts and figures. His department hasn't had a balanced budget in 10 years. There are items listed here that almost call for investigation. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Mayor. Now, that's going a little bit too far. Well, well listen, I, listen I, to this. Loan to Joe Benson for draining swamp, $42. Now, since when is the health department in the money lending business? And without any security either. Dr. Christian put up $25 out of his own pocket, and that wasn't enough. The swamp was a health medicine, naturally. I am what... not questioning Dr. Christian's motives, Mr. Davis, but his methods. I'm not at all sure that the methods of a country doctor are suited to running a modern municipal health department. My apologies. John? Gentlemen. Doctor. Hi, Doctor. How's the patient? She's past the crisis. That's uh, fine. We were just discussing your department, Doctor. Oh, fine. I was afraid I'd be too late. I have a report here somewhere. Let's see. Huh? I'll just skip over the money part. The deficit, you mean? <laughs> yes. Always the deficit. I think they'll figure on it when they give me my appropriation. <laughs> Could we hear the part of your report which you think is important? Well, John, I have a lot of facts here which I want you to go over by yourself. But they all come to the same thing. Rivers End needs a hospital. A hospital? Doctor, have you gone out of your mind? Where are you going to raise that kind of money? Well, you know more about that sort of thing than I do. I thought perhaps we could borrow it or... Have you any idea how much a hospital costs? No. But I know how many lives it's costing us now not to have a hospital. We're talking in dollars and cents. Well, it's a little hard to talk about medicine in terms of dollars and cents. It's quite apparent, Doctor, that one of us must learn to talk the other's language. Now, I have some records of yours here that I would like to talk over in my own terms, if you don't mind. Hello, Paul. Hello, Anne. I dropped in to see John about a little problem I ran into in Squatter's Town. You'll be here in a few minutes. That's fine. How's done? <laughs> like a caged lion. Oh. <laughs> Paul, I heard that you and John had a quarrel at the meeting. I hope it wasn't anything. Oh, it's nothing, Anne. Why, I'm 100% for him. He's doing a fine job. Oh, I am glad to hear it. I guess it keeps him pretty busy doing two jobs at once, eh? Well, you know how conscientious John is. Don, Dr. Kirk, I'd like to hear you talk to Patsy that way, Don. Okay, I won't talk to her at all. Well, I don't see any reason for keeping you in any longer, Don. That's all I wanted to know. Hello, uh, may I speak to Marilee, please? Hello, 
Oh, Bud? What? Oh, Don. That's grand. Yeah, it, it feels plenty good. These last two weeks have been like living on a desert island. Only worse because Patsy was around. Anyway, it's all over now, and we can go to the picnic together. Oh, Don, it's swell that you're out. But about the picnic, well, I sort of promised Bud. Looks like you didn't lose any time while I was sick. Why, Don, I haven't gone out with anyone except Bud. And I only said I sort of promised him. You could break the date, Mary Lee. Why, sure. Just call Bud and tell him... Say, what is this? Patsy! Well, well, Don, haven't you any more sense than to drag your kid sister into our private affairs? Don didn't drag me in, Mary Lee. Patsy, get off the phone! I'm not on the phone, Don. Really, I'm not. I've never been so insulted in all my life. Sorry. Hello, John. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Doctor. Lunch ready, Aaron? It will be in a few minutes. I need your help on something, John. There's a mumps epidemic in Squatter's Town. Well, that isn't serious, is it? No, not in itself. But the way it's spreading is a good indication of what would happen if something dangerous broke out. Those people must be told something about preventive medicine right away. Aren't you capable of telling them what to do? Well, it's a full-time job. We need a district nurse. Someone like Matilda Jamison. She is registered and has not much work lately. Never mind her history. What's it got to do with me? Well, John, it's but your trouble again. I remember what you said to me the other day and... Well, I'm over my allowance already, so... Doctor, if you're asking me to authorize an expenditure beyond your budget on people who aren't even legal residents of River's End, the answer is no. After all, I have an obligation to the taxpayers. It's in the interest of the taxpayers to prevent epidemics. I'm sorry, Doctor, but there's no point in talking about it any further. All right, John. I'll just have to have another deficit. You mean you're going to take this nurse on anyway? You don't leave me any other choice. Doctor, I warn you. The quarterly audit isn't far off. You'd better see to it that your deficit is wiped out. I will, John. But I'm afraid it won't show on paper. Dr. Jim, why did you say there were mumps? In Squatter's Town? They're pretty catching, aren't they? They certainly are. Oh. about a man in a uniform that... Oh. I think I'll have an ice cream soda. What flavor? Well, I want it to taste sort of like this lollipop. Oh, raspberry, huh? Oh, keto. Wait a minute. This isn't just raspberry. It tastes like peppermint as well. Here, you better taste it so you'll know what I mean. Go on, I'm not looking at any old secondhand lollipops. You'll have to order out of this or not at all. I don't see why some parents don't sometimes keep some children home. You know, Marilee, this picnic is really going to be swell. They got the school band and they built a platform where we can dance. Gee, I'm thirsty. Hey, you can't drink out of my glass. You let Marilee, wouldn't you? Well, that's my business. Would you kiss her? Hey, what's the matter with you anyway? Maybe you'd like to kiss Bud. 
I'm just dying to go to the picnic. I really can hardly wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Price. Gee, Miss Price, I am sorry. Oh, Don, what's the matter with you? I guess I was brooding. You brood at pretty high speed. I guess I should realize that other people are still interested in living. Uh, I'll... I'll tell you what, I'll drive you home. Yeah, I'm a little young to die, but all right. looking kind of gloomy. Anything wrong? Do I seem changed? Yes, sort of. I am. Don, what's on your mind? Well, it's got to do with facing a lot of realities. Mostly women. Has Marilee got anything to do with this? Only indirectly. The fact that she sold her soul for a couple of ice cream sodas is significant, but very unimportant. Don, perhaps you're being hasty. Maybe you're making a mistake about women. I've given them their chance. But Don, there are plenty of pretty girls in town besides Marilee. Nice ones, too. Well, I haven't seen any. Well, I resent that. Miss Price, I never talked like that. If I'd known you were a woman, I mean, if I thought of you as a woman. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you. Miss Price, Judy, I never knew, I mean, I didn't think, gee. Just put them on the table, Don. Bye. I, uh, I guess you have some work to do. Yes, Don, thanks for the lift. Well, I was just thinking about the picnic. Oh, I'm sorry, but I promised Roy. I suppose I shouldn't have asked. Oh, but, Don, I'll see you there. Oh, I didn't get it at first. I guess that would be the easiest way. Oh, now, look, I, I don't want you to think Oh, that. now, don't apologize, Judy. I've told you, I've learned to face realities. I think you should go with Roy. Well, I guess I better get going. Yes, maybe that would be best. Uh, Judy. Yes? It's just that, well, I didn't want you to think this happened to me on the rebound. Huh, what's wrong with Don? Is he sick? There's nothing wrong with his health, Doctor. You see, he just drove me home and, well... I... Oh, so that's it, huh? Well, sweet the and gently, Judy. But it's not funny, Doc. Oh, come, Judy, don't take it so seriously. We all went through the puppy love stage when we were young. But Don has adult ideas. <laughs> I suppose the only thing to do is put him in his place next time I see him. You might do better than that. You might have to put him straight, Judy. He's inclined to be pretty wild. I know his mother worries about him and his father, well, he doesn't help. I remember when I was a boy, I was always late for school or played hooky. Never started. One day I got a crush on my teacher. Awful. He had uh, stringy hair and rather big ears. Hey, wait a minute. My ears aren't big. Oh, I didn't have as good taste as Don. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that woman was smart. My before long, she had me working myself to a shadow studying my lessons. I worked so hard that I forgot all about my crush on the teacher. <laughs> I see what you mean, but... I knew you would. All right. But I'm not making any rash promises. I got the notes for your speech, John. Are you feeling better, dear? No, but don't worry about it. Hey, Mom, have I got a clean shirt? Well, if you got the notes, give them to me. I'm coming, dear. I'll look for a shirt right away, Dawn. Hey, who's been using Dad's razor? 
Don, we've got to start for the ceremony in a few minutes. Why don't you let your shaving go until some day when you've got more time? Gosh, Mom, you don't want me to go out in public with a two-day beard. Hello, oh, Anne. Doctor, I am sorry to make you come today of all days, but Patsy feels bad again. Well, Anne, where are my striped pants? Coming, dear. You said you'd have them clean. Open your mouth. Have you been in Squatter's Town lately? Squatter's Town? Well, not exactly. I mean, I was kind of on the edge of it. Yeah, where Jimmy and Pete live, maybe? Jimmy and Pete who? Oh! Mumps. Mumps? Oh, dear. John, Patsy has the mumps. Are you sure? Trust Patsy to catch anything that's around. I guess Donald will have to be quarantined. What? Oh, no. You don't have to do that, do you, Dr. Christian? I haven't kissed him. Well, I should hope not. Don's had the mums. He can go to the picnic. Well, both of you go right along. I'll stay with Patsy. Really, Anne, she'll be perfectly all right. Just has to be quiet for a while. Please go, Mummy. You're the only one I can trust to bring home some ice cream. <laughs> all right. I'll stay for the speech and be right back. Better let Margie know what's happened. Dr. Christian, mm -hmm. are there many cases of mumps in this state? Oh, a few thousand, I guess. How many in uh, River's End? Well, I have some in Squatter's Town. How about up around here, say around uh, Oak Street? What makes you say Oak Street, Patsy? As a matter of fact, it just came from there. Patsy, did you know Bart was going to have the mumps? No. I only hoped he would. I mean, well, I just thought maybe... Patsy, I don't know what we're going to do with you. <laughs> the school site we are dedicating today is only the initial step in my program. Only the initial step, John? Oh, hello, Doctor. <laughs> you sound as if you had something up your sleeve. You wait till the next council meeting. You'll hear how I'm going to bring this town to life. It's for you, Don. Oh, uh, how'd she know who it's for? Oh, Patsy's a pretty smart girl. I'll take it downstairs. Hello. Don? Oh, Nellie. I called about the picnic. I'd much rather go with you than Bud. He's so funny looking and such a show off all the time. And well, well, he's got the mumps. But I'd much rather go with you anyway. Mm-hmm. Hello, Don. Don't mind me. Mary asked Don to take her to the picnic, and Don said no. Oh, maybe he's just giving her some of her own medicine, huh? I don't think so. He's not very smart about girls. Oh. He hung up on her. He did? <laughs> Can you imagine the nerve of that Nellie? Her boyfriend's sick, so now she wants me to take her. Aren't you going to? Don't you love her anymore? That infant? I only go around with women. And I thought I knew all about love. Classrooms will run the full width of the building. Well, where's the principal's office? Oh, that. I think that's upstairs. I know it. Uh, where's Grant? I'm down here in the locker room. Well, let's have a look at those plans. I'd like to get your OK on our loudspeaker system, Mr. Davis. Okay. Mr. Davis. Oh, we're having such trouble with the children. They want to have the tug of war before the potato race. Well, that sounds all right to me. Oh, but look at the schedule. Change the schedule. Hey! Remember me? Oh, huh. hello, Judy. Having a good time? What do you think? I've had three hot dogs and paid for them all myself. Oh, I'm sorry, Judy. Oh, I really? Oh, I guess you mean you mean you've been kind of alone. Do you think that sometime this afternoon you might get ten seconds off to dance with me? Sure, Judy. Um, after the mayor's speech, maybe. 
Say, I've got to check that loudspeaker system. And I interest anyone in some tomato delight, tomato supreme. Tomato surprise. I'd love to. I haven't had any tomatoes since breakfast. Doctor, have you made any commitments for the next dance? Wait a minute, I saw him first. Sorry, Judy. Age before beauty. And I'm awfully clumsy. Why, you're always very great. She's a lovely woman. She should have married the doctor. Mrs. Hastings, what a thing to say. You heard me. That was the second mistake he made. As if burying himself here in the first place wasn't foolish enough. You had to let that Hewitt snatch Ann Weston right from under his nose. Just because he was too shy to speak up about it. Don, I've been looking for you. Hello, kid. I saw a movie last night. It was awful sad. And well, so what? Well, I thought we ought to be careful that we don't spend the rest of our lives paying, paying for a childhood folly. What folly? Our quarrel. Let's forgive each other. Merely, I forgive you completely. In fact, I've forgotten it completely. Well, I'm not so sure you're supposed to forget it. But anyway, now we're reconciled. Let's dance. Sure. A little later. Excuse me, will you? Judy. Oh, hello, Don. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was wondering about a dance. All right. Let's dance. Speeches. I'd kind of like to listen to it. Well, I can tell it to you. I've heard Dad rehearsing it so much around the house, I know it by heart. Anyway, I was thinking about what you said yesterday. About my going to college. I'd like to talk to you. All right, Don. are met here today on the site of a new school. To me, the occasion is an important one because it is the beginning of a new era in Rivers End. Doctor, are you still today, satisfied with your choice? For our new school. But in a sense, this new school will be the cornerstone of this new era. It is not I. It is not I who have brought about this change, but you, you have expressed a desire for a progressive civic government. Silly Marilee, I want to listen to the speech. 
I like to try to see But it's awfully tomorrow. nice, Mr. Davis. I saw Don and Judy walking close together. What? Oh, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, Marilee. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm too busy. Uh, I have to, uh, I have to see a man. College was swell. You know those gay, carefree days they always speak about? I don't want to be gay and carefree. I'd much rather worry if it was about you. Oh, thank you, Don. But what about making a definite decision? I've decided to do anything you want me to. Well, it's nice of you to say that. And there is one thing I would like you to do. And that's give up this silly ambition of yours to become a racing driver. Make yourself the kind of a man you could be. You're grown up now, Don, really. I'm glad you realize that, Judy. Oh, Don, that's canoe in the moonlight technique. It doesn't fit in a little rowboat like this. Uh, perhaps we'd better get back. Well, this is important, the picnic isn't. Why go back? I was thinking about Roy. You don't love him, do you, Judy? Don, I don't want you to think that and I... you do care for me? You're a sweet boy, <laughs> yes, but... Oh, God! I really love you. I'll save you, Judy! blanket on this little love scene, but what's going on here? Nothing of importance to you, Mr. Davis. The heck it is, and I ought to punch somebody in the nose. Well, go ahead and try it. Don, would you mind leaving us alone for just a minute, please? Is that the way you want it? Yes, Don, please. Well, glad I found this out before I got it any deeper. Ladies and gentlemen, our municipal problem is like that of any how to raise the capital necessary for expansion. Now, what is it that Rivers End needs most of all? The answer, my friends, is roads. Roads and more roads. If we can raise the money to build a modern highway approach into our town, we will repay the investment tenfold. Thank you, my friend. Splendid, Mayor. Splendid. Congratulations, John. Excellent, John. How much money does this project of yours require, John? Oh, don't you worry about that, Doctor. The government will pay most of it. All we have to do is to raise $250,000 by a bond issue. Why, that's more than a hospital would cost, and you told me you couldn't raise it. I have looked into your hospital idea, Dr. Christian, and it doesn't hold water. What do you mean? Last year, only 19 cases from River's End were registered in Center City Hospital. Well, who do you uh, think is responsible for the fact that we didn't have to send more people there? I don't care about that. I'm only interested in bringing new business and tourist trade to River's End. And I'm interested in taking care of the people you've got here already. I'm sorry, Doctor, but I can't discuss it any further. You haven't discussed it at all. Instead of waiting for the next council meeting, you made a grandstand play to satisfy your vanity. You can't talk to me like that. I thought you liked plain language. In any case, it's the way I intend to talk to you from now on. I give you fair warning, John, that I'm going to show you up at the next council meeting. Even if you could, you won't, because you won't be there. You're fired. Fired? Yes. You're an incompetent old fool who should have gone out with a horse and buggy. I'm going to get a health commissioner who knows something more than how to diagnose mumps. Miss Hastings. 
Now, if you've come to pay a little something on account... I have. I heard about the doctor and that. Joe Benson, you'd have to be a smuggler to get another tomato in this house. Well, I, I, I brought cash. It ain't much, but they, there it is. Where'd you get it? Oh, I put over a little deal. A deal? Piffle. Couldn't your wife make use of that two dollars on her budget? Yeah, but she felt that I... Just what I thought. And she'd probably like something else to cook besides tomatoes, wouldn't she? We were talking about the doctor, and we felt that Oh, now, I... please. Go along. Go along with you. Go on. Hi. Hey, Miss Judy, has the doctor heard? I think it's a shame. What is all this? Well, we heard there's a new doctor coming over from Center City to be health commissioner. Oh, that. Yes, the doctor heard about it last night. How's he taking it? Well, he... I stayed up last night going over the books. Oh, you shouldn't do that, Judy. You need your sleep. Doctor... I'm worried. We just can't balance our accounts without that $600 from the health department. We'll find a way. Hand me that slide, will you? I'll suspend my salary, of course. No, Judy. That's one thing that's out of the question. Doctor, I, I know I should take this the way you have. Go on working as though nothing had happened, but I can't do it. I can't. Judy, you're upset. Of course I'm upset. There's a doctor coming in. You can't have too many doctors. But you'll never get your hospital. I know, Judy. I know. Or any of the other things you've been working for. Say, Judy, I won't be able to work if you make me feel like this. Sorry, doctor. I shouldn't have gone to pieces. It's a big help to know how you feel. What is it? I brought this gauze over. I don't recall the doctor ordering any. Well, I uh, thought maybe he might need some and... Well, he doesn't. Judy, I came because I want to talk to you. I don't think we have anything to talk about. It's not about us. It's about the doctor. Oh. Well, that's different. Judy, I... We can't let this little thing between us interfere with anything that we might be able to do for him. What do you mean, little thing? Well, it's little compared to what's happened to the doctor. How about a drive later this afternoon to talk it over? Well, if you'll promise not to try and talk about us. I promise. It'll be strictly business. Days been very tiring. Work piling up. Yes, dear. Not that it's anything serious. Probably just need relax a little bit. Maybe play a game of golf too. Yes, dear. For heaven's sake, stop yes daring me. Why don't you show a little emotion once in a while? Supposing I don't feel any. That's the trouble with you. You're too even tempered. You're going around all day, that martyred look on your face. Heaven knows what you're thinking. You know what I'm thinking, John. Well, why don't you stop thinking it then? How long are you going on brooding about that mid-Victorian fuss budget? I'm much more concerned about you than Dr. Christian. I am doing fine, thank oh, you. Oh, no, you're not. You're tired and unsure of yourself. Because it isn't so much fun being mayor when people pass you without speaking and talk about you behind your back. You've got a bad attack of conscience because you discharged a man from public office out of spite. That's not true. A man who's looked after us ever since we were married, who brought our children into the world, an old and loyal friend. He's no friend of mine. I don't want to hear any more about it. Don. Hello. Where 
always be asking an awful lot for you to talk to me a minute. If you like. What do you want to talk about? Oh, anything. It's just that with Daddy and Mommy so upset, and me still having to stay in all the time, I'm kind of lonely. Sometimes it's good to be alone. You get a chance to think and find a new perspective on life. Yes, I guess that's right. But couldn't we maybe find a new what-you-color of life together? I'm afraid not, Patsy. You mean you're still mad at me? Not at all. Why should I be mad at you? That what's to stop us from being friends? Only the fact that someday you'll be a woman. I've said all I'm going to say. You've never talked to me like this in 20 years. That's the mistake I made. I'm afraid I waited too long. Now, what are you moping about? First you get a case of measles, then you get a case of puppy love. Now all you do is drape yourself around furniture all day. Why don't you get out and do something worthwhile with your life? going away. So am I. Look, I want to be alone. Okay. Let's be alone together. You look tired, Judy. It was a pretty tough week. But we didn't come out here to talk about me. <clears throat> no. Five seconds. Is is she badly hurt? Terribly. an operation if you expect to save a life. That's a, a brain operation, isn't it? Yes, I'm afraid it's very serious. But if we have your permission, we'll proceed immediately. Can't we take her to Center City or on to Chicago? I can get an airplane. It would be very dangerous to move or take my word for it. Then 
It's got to be done right now. Within a few hours at most. An operation like this, I... I've got to do everything I can for Patsy. I understand how you feel. Well, aren't there men who do nothing but this sort of thing? If you want to call in a specialist, you're at liberty to do so. Yes, that's what I mean. I... I want to get the best specialist I can. I, I'll telephone Chicago. I can get one here by airplane within two hours. But, Mr. Hewitt... Judy, you better get the oxygen tank ready. Hello? Hello? Operator, I want to call Chicago. He'll feel better if you were Dr. Christian. But this like... man is the best specialist in Chicago, I tell you. Don't be a fool, Ann. Dr. Wells. How do you do, nurse? Surgery's in here. Would you like to see Yes. It? You haven't any spot lamps? Afraid not. I've seen one of those sterilizers in a good many years. In this case? Yes. There's a bedroom upstairs if you'd care to change. Very good. Splendid. Your doctor's diagnosis is perfectly correct. What's his name? Dr. Christian. Paul Christian. Oh, I should like to meet him. He's with the patient. This way. doing anything. How much longer is this going to go on? Sit down, will you? Dad is tough enough for us as it is. It's tough, is it? Oh, but Dr. Wells, your fee. I should be very glad to take care of it now. $1,500 is about right. I prefer that you make it out to Dr. Christian, if you don't mind. Well, naturally, I don't mind, of course, but... Dr. Christian asked me not to mention it, but I feel obliged to tell you that he actually performed the operation. But I sent for you. To... Yes, yes, I know. But frankly, Mr. Hewitt, I'd have been a bit hesitant about performing any major operation, let alone a delicate decompression with the limited facilities in that surgery. What Dr. Christian just did is a miracle. Besides, don't you think I'd be a bit presumptuous to perform an operation which was introduced to this country by another man? And that man was here himself? Well, goodbye. I'm afraid some of you have been underestimating your local physician.
You'll never forget what you did. Go in and see him. But be very quiet. Anne's inside, John. You better take her home. She's exhausted. Yes, I'll be right over. 